What's going on, MetaFam? In today's video, I want to highlight here uh, Mr. Mark Basile stepping up for us here, guys. Like I said, he is here on our side. I truly believe that. Uh, and he actually did a reply back here to Mr. Pete Sessions. Uh, and then after we cover this, we're going to listen to um, Anna Trades uh, during my interview with Mr. John Berta. Anna got on, asked her question, and it's going to kind of tie into this here. So, uh, Let's get into it. So Pete Sessions replied back to Fox News about breaking news. Uh, Durham finds the DOJ FBI failed to uphold mission of strict fidelity to the law and the Trump Russia probe. And Pete Sessions says Durham confirmed the DOJ and FBI uh, bludgeoned Trump for years without proper cause. Every American should be alarmed by the DOJ's willingness to peddle this phony investigation. Federal law enforcement agencies should rebuild their trust with the American people. Boy, did Mr. Mark Basile keep in those last two sentences there, guys, those last two sentences. Mr. Mark Basile just hit it out of the park with this post. And let's just get to it. While every American is alarmed, there are more alarmed at yours and your other elected political leaders' inability to do anything about this other than hold hearings. But if you are going to conduct a hearing, you are so better off bringing in the victims of MMTLP fiasco and discussing how the markets are skewed against retail traders rather than social media photo op with their hands report. Do your job. Wow. That there is what I am talking about. Uh, there's a little bit of other conversations down here. Um, you know, going on as well. So definitely check out this post. Uh, like I said, Mark just nailed it out of the park with this response. You know, with Pete talking about this here, every American should be alarmed the DOJ's willingness to peddle this phony investigation. Well, we are alarmed that a lot of all the Congress people are just ignoring retail investors and ignoring the market makers breaking the law. And because they're getting filled up pockets of donations, by the big hedge funds and stuff like that and the broker dealers. It's a bunch of bull crap. And I'm glad Mark stepped up here and worded it in a way that hits home. And that's how I feel about it. These people are getting paid to ignore this situation and it's a load of crap. And I'm glad we got this out here to set it straight. Now, Syntax here did a heartfelt tweet out to Anna Trades and highly suggest, I got this, I retweeted this on my Twitter so you can get it. You can also read this whole tweet um, on syntax post as well. Uh, like I said, very heartfelt. And like I said, this here is much love to Anna Trades. Uh, so we're going to listen to this clip here where Anna Trades uh, gets the mic here on my uh, interview with Mr. John Berta. And she gets to voice her opinions. And now we did videos on her where she was down in DC getting to talk to all the Congress people. And you're going to hear that. And we're going to get to hear what Mr. John Berta has to say about this as well. Thank you, Terry. Uh, thanks, John, for coming on the call today. Sure. Um, I kind of wanted to touch on what Drew was speaking on about the House, where you were mentioning that, you know, the call from today. Um, I, you know, I met with McHenry's office twice while I was in D.C. Um, with his head staffer. So they're very well aware of our situation. In fact, all of Congress is aware of our situation. And, you know, he was surprised when I went back in and you know, t told him the day I was leaving who, um, who Angel was. So, and then because it was brought to our attention that it was Sessions office that had brought Angel in. And I'm not sure who in Sessions office brought, um, Angel in to meet with those 18 staffers. But my thought now is that we need to focus on the government accountability office to hold Congress accountable because why are they taking $62 million in donations from the Citadel? And that's just one hedge fund in one year. Mm -hmm. I think at this point, it is much bigger than just 
FINRA and the SEC not doing their job because they are given their power by Congress. And Congress is taking money from the people who are essentially robbing the 99.5%. So at what point do we hold Congress accountable? You know, we've sent over 40,000 letters. We have dropped them off. We have had meetings after meetings with them. And really, they've done nothing. I, You know, I left there. And when I was leaving, uh, Doug from McHenry's office said, yeah, Anna, I thought that Sessions was going to be putting forth questions for response. We haven't seen anything. So at what point do... I mean, how many times do we have to meet with them? I, I, I'm yeah, just I kind of stumped with the whole congressional um, outreach and the <clears throat> lack of response on that behalf. You know, I, I, I'm 100% with you on the lack of response on that. I know that there's, you know, some things going on in the background with, with sessions. And I know that, um, you know, one of the guy, the guy that was out front for us for sessions is no longer out front. Um, and so, you know, I don't want to necessarily give away Pete, Pete's thinking on everything, but um, but I, I, I agree with you. I, I, if you look at the, the list of the people that are receiving money, it's a long list on both sides of the table. And, um, and there's no doubt they've got their ear and they've got their, uh, you know, they've got their attention with the dollars they spend. And it's a, it's a frustrating aspect of how our political system works. Um, and I, I do know this, you know, for example, um, if you remember the bill that was in front of Congress, you know, it was a year or two ago regarding the short selling rule. H.R. 4618, the Short Sell Transparency Act. Right. And, um, you know, I, I know a lot of people voted against it. And that could be uh, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, that there was other things attached to it, which I haven't fully baked out yet. But secondly, it could be a function of, you know, someone's got their ear. So I don't know. I just know that our, our system is uh, unfortunately uh, a lot of what they call, as you know, called sausage making. And us regular folks don't really understand why things happen the way they do. Um, and we're, and it's, it's frustrating because, you know, the market is uh, as dirty as we all know. And, and now we're finding out that politics is very dirty as well. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, okay. John. We got a couple quick mics. We can try to rapid fire these in like one. Okay, guys. So uh, there it was. Like I said, um, as we know, let me get my camera back here. Uh, pretty much, like I said, we see there, guys, that money talks. And that that's what this all boils down to, that uh, you know, we're, we're complaining about FINRA, we're complaining about the SEC and the DTCC and all these other, you know, government agencies. But the people that can, you know, change it are kind of seems like they're also against us uh, because that'd be Congress. You know, our representatives, they are getting their pockets filled by the bad actors and they're donating. You know, you heard their Citadel was like 60 million dollars. And they're funding all their political campaigns and all their trips and stuff. And they're paying for them to just ignore the truth, in my personal opinion. Here's this money. Just ignore it. Keep doing what you're doing. Let the system run so we can keep, you know, basically scamming the system and scamming the retail investor. And that's their goal. And, that, and that's what it seems like it's going to be. And I don't know what it's going to be in order for this to change. But we definitely need to get people in there that's going to, and hopefully the next election will be able to do that. So that is all I've got for you in today's video. Love and appreciate every single one of you all. Peace.